Hello, today is Sunday. It is the 13th day of January 2013, and welcome to uh, today's video. This will be what will be covered. Number one, web pages that I visited on, fr I visited on Friday. And this will be regarding the debt ceiling, the fiscal cliff, and the stock market. After that is completed, I'll talk about what happens when crashes occur, and then I uh, put out some requests for the weekend. And the request that was filled or will be filled are four stock codes, ARUN, WLT, WFM, and ARNA. Arna. Yeah, let's get started here. So this is uh, some web pages that I went to. The, the right down here from Fox News Insider. And one of the paragraphs in the article state, On December 31st, Treasury Secretary Timothy Geithner announced that the debt limit was actually already reached, but the Treasury took extraordinary measures to shuffle funds around in order to keep meeting its obligations. And, well, Timothy Geithner, of course, has stepped down as Treasury Secretary since then, and they've added somebody else. But you just got to read these words, and I don't know if you're going to shake your head or what you're going to do, but Treasury taking extraordinary measures... Wow. So what do they do? They shuffled funds around, did some number crunching within the computers. And that's when, if you go to the uh, debt clock webpage, you will see a uh, U.S. debt subject to limit. These are the things in the, the, what they're doing, basically buying a bit more time. In the same article, the debt limit is currently set at $16.4 trillion, and the government is expected to surpass that figure on March the 1st. A new report for the Bipartisan Policy Center says that number may actually be surpassed as early as February 15th. Just to know what the dates are, that's the importance within that one. I want to show you a photo now, and this is from the telegraph.co.uk. You can see a little tea party, which is what's going on. Uh, taxed enough already is what uh, tea party stands for. And I want to go over the two sides that are readable. This side and these sides aren't readable, but this one and this one is. Because it seems that the vast majority don't understand the problems that are going on. And this picture really captions that, I believe. When well, you see this little side here, don't raise the ceiling, lower the spending. And it's the spending of what, one may ask. And well, the answer to that is fiat debt notes. Then you have this one here. Cut spending and well, balance the budget. Balance it. You know, the, the thing that's interesting is we have a fiat currency that only central banks like the Federal Reserve are allowed. They're the only ones allowed to mine fiat currency. Yes, mine fiat currency, which means they make it. They loan, loan it out at interest, expect you to pay back what's impossible to pay back. Thus, debt is guaranteed to exist. So therefore, it's, it's a, a problem just to be in the system. So when you say stuff like balance the budget, lower the spending, that tells me that you want to keep the fiat debt-based system alive. I don't see anything about ending the Fed or anything amongst that level. The whole point of bringing this is that there are extreme it's just almost everybody doesn't understand the problems that the fiat currency actually brings. Moving on, this is the projected date, different chart, of course, for uh, the debt ceiling. You can see one said March the 1st, which would be this slide here. One said February 15th, which the bipartisan group would, that's it right there. So the, next one, this is from CNBC.com. After watching the market post double-digit returns last year, and with the fiscal cliff resolved, well, for now, Americans are pouring billions of dollars into stocks. And, and, and quote, we'll get to the next paragraph in just a little while. Americans are pouring billions of dollars into stocks. Now, Americans is a noun. A noun means person, place, or thing. It could be a group of people. And that's what it is, Americans, group of people. Now, of these Americans, how many of them that put billions of dollars into stocks, how many of them would have been part of the market makers, different financial institutions? They're not going to tell you that. But anyway, moving within this uh, 
article. Just over $22 billion flowed into long-term equity mutual funds and ETFs for the week ending January the 9th, according to Bank of America Merrill Lynch. That was the second highest amount on record after the $22.8 billion that went into equity funds in September of 2007. May I add that the market top in September, or not, excuse me, in 2007... I think it was actually September itself. It might have been October. But that's where the Dow Jones reached 14.2 trillion. Uh, or excuse me, 14.2 thousand on the Dow. Okay, anyway. And moving on within this article. I have to take this as bullish, said Dennis Gartman, veteran author of the Daily Gartman Letter. Perhaps one gets a bit antsy when the public's in. But inflows are always better than net outflows, and the public is still sitting on a mountain of cash or debt securities. Some, however, believe it's too early to tell if this is really a trend. Now, within this article, they're talking about how they survived the whole debt ceiling. As you can see for now, uh, with the fiscal cliff resolved for now, excuse me, they resolved the fiscal cliff. But what they didn't talk about was the debt ceiling which is a little interesting. So this is, to me, setting up for about a month from now for things to get a little antsy within the stock market itself. Okay, so the next uh, topic, number two. What happens when crashes occur? This is an example of what a chart might look like when it goes through a serious crash. I don't, I don't got dates on here. I don't got prices on the right-hand side. To let you know, this is the silver daily chart, and we are right here right now. And again, I'm not saying that this type of event would take place. However, when you get situations when things capitulate hard... Generally, what happens is these moves will really undershadow and make these moves tidy. That's the first thing that you would notice. The second is what trades afterwards. When this thing bottoms at whatever time frame, the movements that will occur would be less than the sizes here and much greater than these sizes or in between. So let's just put it this way. If the average move on one of these candles is a percent and a half, these moves are like, say, 25%, then you can expect post moves of about 7, 8, 9%. This could be going from 29 down to 24, and if that's the case, I would expect it to move back up to 26 or 27 it could be moving from 29 down to 10. And if it moves down to 10, I would expect it to move fast up to 18 or 19. And it's just wild movements. Here's an example of a historical one of silver that actually took place over a year ago. This is dated right in here on no, September the 27th, 2011. Now, this is the hourly chart, which would have transformed into big red candles on the daily chart. So each one of these took 60 minutes, going from 40 down to 26 in a couple of days. Now, what happened afterwards? Notice that you had one hour where it went from 26 up to about 27 and a half. That's about $1.50. That's about 6% in an hour. The next hour, it did the same. In fact, it got up to about 30 from 26 in less than three hours, which at that point was about a gain of 15%, and then back up again to 33 and change. So you go from 26 to 33, that was a gain of about 7, or over 20% in a day because of what occurred. Now, interestingly enough, Silver has not been above this point here or, or has not broken down below this low. So everything that occurred in here in about two days, two and a half days, 40, 50 hours, has not broken out of this range since. It has stayed below this high, which of course topped here. It has stayed above this low, hitting that low twice more since that point precisely. And, of course, that's what normally happens when you have 
major capitulation moves. Okay, stock requests. Let's uh, take a look at this starting with ARUD. Now, this is a three-week chart. All these charts will be going back to before the market top of 07. Now, let's take a look at this, what we're seeing. Right now, we see it looking to possibly break out with this nice uh, inverted cup and, or cup and handle formation just somewhat short term. That's one of the things that we're seeing in here with a flat 18 average trying to, of course, move higher. What else do we see on this chart? We see a Fibonacci fail as far as I'm concerned because that's a decent sized pierce above that level, which can give you headaches if you play this game trying to A, cover a short at this level because that didn't happen. It also didn't allow you to buy to that level because it, it never went down towards there. Now also look at the duration of the size of this move. You go from a high of about 20 down to about 2. Massive, massive move. Now, I've talked before about situations where you end up having losses of about 50, 60 percent. And then as, because stocks pretty much never or rarely ever go to nothing, although sometimes they will, to buy a stock after it loses 50, 60 percent and then sell when it makes back to the previous high without a stop loss. This is a perfect example. So let's just assume that you're selling at the top is 24, 50% would bring it to 12, and 60% down to 10. If you were to buy this at 10, which would be somewhere around here, without a stop, you would have went through this entire loss. However, if you're playing to go for uh, the back to its previous high, you would have profited here to double your gains. And I, again, I don't uh, recommend this type of system. And I guess the main reason is, is because... To me, this is casino codes, and you have to play with the financial institution in order to play. But I think it's something interesting to uh, point out as well. Let's take a look at this again, but adjust the Fibonacci now. And we're adjusting it from point A to point B. And uh, this one has worked out uh, fairly well. You've had nice support in this area here, but obviously uh, multiple tests in this area breaking above here. Things should be going fairly well. Okay, the next one is WLT. We'll also look at the three-week chart. And you talk about, again about large volatile moves. You go here from about 110 down to about oh, 10 or so, 11 again, losing 10 times your value. Same thing as before. If you're waiting to, for it to lose, say, 60%, then you're waiting for it to go down to about 50 right here. So if you bought at this point without a stop loss, well, then you didn't get stopped here. And if you played the strategy based on back to its previous high, you're always going to get a better than a 100% gain as long as your loss is more than 50%, which means you buy at 50, you sell at 100 kind of deal. And we're at the same thing again. So we have a top of 143, so 50% would be 72, so about... 60% is about 60-ish, which means maybe you bought here somewhere. And, of course, you'd still be holding, waiting to get back to here if, of course, that's the place. And it does make it easy in an inflationary environment, which, of course, is what we're in. As far as Fibonacci retracement is concerned, this one is played by the book extremely well. You're taking it from this low to this high. You find perfect support at that level. You bounce, you consolidate. Now that you back there again, chances are increased that you take it out. You did take it out. Now you've had a lot of support at this level, where if uh, you basically have a clear break above this mark here, you'd be looking for a test here, probably something like that as uh, a normal. And if uh, it doesn't break out and you have another test down at the uh, 29 and a half level later on, odds would increase that it takes it out. Okay, two more. We'll look at WFM and Arna. WFM, this thing, uh, again, you can take a look at a situation where this thing was at like 75. You lose about 60%. That takes you down to 30. Again, you wouldn't have been stopped at because you didn't have a stop. And again, it would have been a successful play. Now, I'm just interested to see the success rate people would have if, of course, you'd waited for a 60% drop and then wait for it to go back to its previous high. There's some stocks like AIG and 
General Motors where you tried that and you failed. That, that goes with the territory as well. But if you look at how many stocks actually fail compared to how many rebound from a 60% decline, it's actually uh, pretty decent. And then what might, one might say, well, 60% even enough for that correctionary phase. Maybe you wait for a 75% correction within this if, of course, you're looking for that kind of system. As far as I look at this, this is the major capitulation, back up faster, and, of course, making new highs in a bull market right now. Final one, I'm going to call this the Bart Inverted Bart Simpsons Formation, <coughs> Arna. And this is just, I mean, I don't know what else to say about this stock, but wow. Here's the situation here, starting in here, where it just capitulates lower, and then back again. This I call this an inverted Bart, Bart Simpson's head formation, because Bart Simpson's head was always something like this, so... This is the inverted of it, down fast, then you have this choppy action in here, which would be the head part, and then back up again to the neckline, extremely fast again. Now, as far as the chart analysis of this is concerned, it uh, not only managed to uh, above, uh, get back to its high, but it's breaking above it, holding nicely right now, but... Definitely an interesting looking uh, chart to say the least. More on this whole 60% retracement. The high was 2068. So if you waited for like eight, okay, you waited here, you'd still be waiting for this thing to uh, get back to its $20 high. But at this point, you'd be up a dollar or something. And that's again a little, little bit of how that game would be played. You might be holding it for a long time. Citigroup, you'd still be holding in the red for quite some time as, of course, one example. Alrighty, so I'd like to end today's video. Thank you all for tuning in, and uh, have yourself a magnificent week. Bye-bye.